Okay, we're back to the production possibilities model. We've got some more numbers up there and a few graphs. Here's the deal. Here's the land. Here's the people. The people can either grow and consume wine by growing grapes or eat their veggies. Either way, they're pretty happy, but they like a combination of both, perhaps, I don't know. If they really like their wine, they're going to make 10,000 pounds of grapes and grow all wine. They won't have anything to eat. If they really like their veggies, they'll grow 12,000 pounds of veggies, and they'll use all their land to grow veggies, and they won't have any wine to drink. And that wouldn't make them very happy, would it? But the whole basis of this idea is on something called the law of increasing... Opportunity costs. It's a lot of words, but it's not a complicated concept. It's got to do with this piece of land here. That's what it's got to do with. Remember, down here is growing good veggies. Up here is good for grapes. So this land is different. It's got a hillside with sun coming on it and the grapes like that. A nice flat, rich soil from the valley and the vegetables like that. So vegetables grow good here. Grapes grow good here. The whole point is that this resource is not perfectly and completely adaptable to alternative uses. The alternative use is either growing grapes or veggies. So for example, if you grow grapes on all of this land, you can produce 10,000 pounds. If you stop growing grapes, say you use some of the land for vegetables, you lose grapes. You lose 2,000 pounds of grapes. But look what you gain you gain 6,000 pounds of vegetables. You know why? Because you're reducing your grape growing down here in this beautiful vegetable land. Here's the plants right here. The beautiful, beautiful vegetable land is producing a lot of vegetables. It's great for vegetables. Now let's see what happens when you try to grow more vegetables. Well, you start to take grapes out of the vegetable land, and now you start to take grapes out of here, out of this land up here. What happens in that case? Now you're starting to take grapes out of some pretty good grape land, maybe up to here. So it's going to cost you some more. Here you lost 2,000 pounds of grapes. Here you went from 8,000 to 5,000. You lost 3,000 pounds of grapes. And now that you're coming up this hill here, you've only gained 4,000 pounds of vegetables. See that? You gained 6. And now you've only gained 10,000 minus 6,000 is 4,000. This land is not perfectly adaptable to alternative uses. Let's move forward again. Forget the wine. We don't need wine anymore. We're going to take all of our land and make it into vegetables. But you know what's left? Is this land up here. It's not that very good. It's rocky. It's too hot. Vegetables don't grow that very well up here. Maybe you can grow some onions. That's about it. You go from 10,000 to 12,000. You made 6,000 on the first chunk. You made 4,000 more vegetables on the second chunk. This third chunk, although pretty big, you're only getting 2,000 pounds of vegetables. Not very good, is it? And look at all the grapes you're losing. 5,000 pounds of grapes. Here you lost 2,000 pounds. Here you lost 3,000 pounds. And here you lost 5,000 pounds of grape. That is the increasing opportunity cost. That is the increasing opportunity cost. And weirdly enough, this drives a lot of supply and demand. This drives the supply curve and the way it's sloped up like that for many things. This is key to understanding why it is that supply and demand work to help us solve the problem of unlimited, once unlimited resources. Here is our production possibilities curve. Big deal, right? Okay, so we've got it. What does that mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means we can chart these things. So for grapes, we put 10,000 here. And if you do this correctly, you'll go down to, let's say, I guess that's about 5,000. And at 5,000, we can produce, this is 12,000 out here. We can produce 10,000 and 5,000. So we put a dot there. And at 12,000, we produce zero. So we put a dot here. And if we produced 8,000 pounds of grapes about right here, you could produce about 5,000 pounds of veggies about there. If you produced, uh, let's see, those are our dots. And you know what? If you produce 10,000, you produce zero veg because it starts at zero. You connect the dots, ladies and gentlemen. And when you connect the dots, you end up with a curve like that. What's going on? I'll tell you what's going on. This curve is reflecting this concept of 
decreasing or increasing opportunity costs. So for example, if you start at 10,000 grapes and you grow some more vegetables, 6,000 of them up to here, right? What do you lose? You lose just this little space right here. Why? Because you're just taking this kind of not very good grape land, you're reducing your grape production, and you're increasing your vegetable production by a ton. So you get way out here to point A, or we'll call that point B, actually. This is point A right here. Point A is this one right here. Point B is this one right here. Let's go again now. Let's see, we got 8,000. Now we're going to go up. We're going to lose 3,000. From 8,000 to 5,000, we go down here. That's a loss of 3,000. What do we gain? We gain from 6,000 to 10,000. We gain 4,000. We go over here to point C. What did we lose? 3,000 in grapes. That's an opportunity cost. There's the opportunity cost. And now we're going to go from 10,000 to 12,000 over here to here. And what did we lose? We lost 5,000. Now your textbooks might do this ratio. So what is this? You gain 6, you lose 2. You gain 4, you lose 3. You gain 2, you lose 5. This just keeps getting worse and worse. The ratio keeps getting worse and worse. 6 to 2, 4 to 3, 2 to 5. I don't know. You can use ratios. I don't worry about the ratios so much. In my case, i just like you to understand, look at that lost little, little, even bigger. Of course, you're gaining even more. This is incredible opportunity costs increasing. Incredible. You're losing so many grapes every time. If you don't like wine, that's fine. But if you like wine, your costs go up. Now, that's all fancy and good, and it seems silly. Grapes and veggies, is that all? This is just a little model, a little picture of the problems we face. This is us over here. We have land, labor, metal. Um, I don't know, time, water, air, what are we going to do with it? This is just one little picture of trying to understand the economizing problem. The main point is you can't have it all, ladies and gentlemen. You cannot have it all. You have to make a choice. You have to make an economizing choice. Okay, thank you very much. Next time, I'll wrap up the production possibilities model with production possibilities model 4. That's my phone, by the way. I got to go get it. Bye.